Hello, my name is Lester Garrett, Director of Delivery. I have over 18 plus years of BI experience. I am birth certified and I'm a proud veteran of the Air Force 23 years. Today we will, I will demonstrate how to import and construct a data model within births. Let's get right into it. I'm going to create a new space and what we're going to do, which is the most common database, is we're going to actually import a couple of Excel spreadsheets, uh, one from the zip file and one being raw data. Uh, so we're going to create a space really quickly here. The space. And the space is nothing more than the container. And we're going to choose to do it manually this time. We're going to advance the data model, modeling, which means we're going to actually go through and set up the linking. It's just a few tables. Um, so we're going to call this uh, import data. And create data model. Okay. And again, we're going to be using Excel. Um, data source because this is probably one of the most common sources out there. Uh, I'm going to show you how to quickly retrieve your data sources and also bring in a zip file and we're going to link it together and, and create a data model and, and show you that how quickly you can get up and running within the cloud environment. So this is, this is the total cloud environment end-to-end -end, uh, zero resources to be continued with. So what I'm going to do back, go back into my um, First step is to load my data. Again, step one, a little flat file. I can use first connect. We'll talk about that in just a second. So I'm going to just point to my local drive. It can be on the network, a local machine. In this case, I have already set up a demo. I'm going to browse my local drive. And we're going to first bring in a zip file. Okay, we've got a customer table. This then a zip file. We're simulating that we can bring in multiple data sources doesn't really care where they reside. I'm going to upload. Give it a few seconds here. And again, this for demo purposes, 20 megabytes or less, um, just for speed. And I'm going to also go back and retrieve, um, say, my order detail. As you can see here, this is uh, not zipped up at all. And let's upload. And we're going to bring in this one more table. And we'll bring in order table. And upload. So now what we can do is go back to my data flow and take a look at what I have. So now I have my, my three sources here, my three tables. Again, one coming from a zip file and two raw tables. And right now they're disabled, so we must first right-click and enable each source or data set. Enable. Okay. So now that now we've connected, um, enabled the data source, is we can um, do what we need to do. We want to first take a look um, and look at our primary key to make sure it's set. Because again, um, this is how the relationship is going to be formed and it's going to identify um, based on the primary key. You can see customer ID is our primary key. It's just a table. It's checked. Great. I'm going to look at my order detail. Set the primary key. It's like, okay, we got order ID, product ID, check. And we also have orders. Orders. So in the orders table, the order ID, customer ID. And now we should be able to have a relationship between our tables. Hit OK. So now what I can do is right click on my customers and say join to related source. It's going to identify or in which table I can actually have a relationship with. So it makes it very easy. Let's click. I'm going to remove it so we can see it. I'm going to do the same thing with the order detail. Right click. Join related source. Okay, in this case I need to right click. That. Okay. I'm going to right click, set primary key, and I'll also then we ship, order field, set primary key, and we Mm -hmm. 
Hello, my name is Lester Garrett, Director of Delivery, and over 18 plus years of BI experience. I'm birth certified, and I'm a retired veteran of the U.S. Air Force Reserve for 23 years. Today, we're going to talk about how to import and construct a data model within Burst. Let's get right into it. I'm going to change my screen. And I've already pre-logged into Burst and created a space or a container, if you will, to hold my data source. What we're going to do, we're going to bring in a couple um, spreadsheets on um, Excel, one being from the zip file, one being from um, uh, the raw data set. And we want to bring them in and link them together manually and, and set the uh, ID, the primary key, to ensure that the relationships uh, can be established. So we're going to go to my admin tool. Again, this is in the cloud environment. I'm running from a wireless laptop, and you're going to see that speed is pretty good here. And if we give it a chance to load, all we're going to do is follow the steps. Step one, upload a flat file. Yes, we can connect to a live database if you wanted to. In terms of um, if it's secured an issue, if it's the larger data set, such as Oracle, SQL, if you're fixing their data warehouse, we can use the first connect and connect directly to a live data source. But in this case, we're just going to simply browse to our local network or our desktop or what have you in, and import the data for this particular example. So we have a customer database that's residing in the zip file. So I'm just going to open up my zip file real quickly here, upload. Now I'm going to go back and select order the detail. You see there's an Excel spreadsheet, upload, different data source. And we're going to also go back and bring in my order table and just upload. And keep in mind this can be accessed, this can be essentially any data source. Um, again, just for this demo, I'm just showing you how it works, how easily we can get up and running. So I'm going to go back to my data flow. And you're going to see I should have my three sources here. Great, my raw data sources. I must enable them. Just right-click enable. Okay, this allows me to interact and maneuver and see what's in the tables. I'm going to spread this out here just a little bit because I know how I want this set up. So now I'm just going to basically right click and make sure my primary key is set. Customer, customer ID, great. Um, orders, set the primary key. And I know my orders are going to go from my orders ID to part, um, okay. I'm select product ID. We're not going to be using that table. Let's take an example. Bring my order in here, manage sources, and close that, right click, set primary key. And since I know my orders is going to link to my customer, my order detail, I'm going to make sure my customer ID is selected. Hit OK. And now the, the two birds are smart enough to know, OK, which primary keys should relate? Why can I right click on my customer and say join related source? It's going to know that the orders have the same key. Likewise, if I right click on the orders, detail, join related source, it knows to go to my orders table. And it also defines the relationship one to many, one to many. So we're good to go. So now we're going to construct the data model. Okay, but before we do that, let's just right click on the customer table, go to manage sources so I can just kind of show you around. Again, we have a number of um, options here, grain, which is my lowest possible uh, level of detail you want to show in the report and analyze. And again, uh, I got my level of hierarchies, you can go back and change the data types, the width, and so forth. Um, again, we have my raw data, so if I actually want to take a look and see what the data source looks like, I can see my actual data. 
but we're going to go back and now process. So we're going to assume this is the best case scenario where the data is pretty clean and we have my primary keys and the data is up perfectly in this case. I'm going to close this and now I'm going to process the data. Process the data means I'm going to go out and construct now my data model um, on the fly. This is where the automation of the data model comes into place. So I'm going to go to my process data. Hit process now. And you're going to see I'm going to process all three tables. Hit continue. And we just give it a few moments here as it goes back out and runs the query and actually executes the data and constructs the data model. You can see if it's processing, you upload the data. And there you have it. And I go to my details just to kind of verify and check to see if we had any errors, any warnings. In this case, this is per, again perfect data. Also give you the processing time of each table, the rows process. So I'm going to go back to my um, uh, defined sources here. Data flow. I'm just going to update my data model. Okay, it goes through and constructs, and there we have it. You just created a data warehouse. And it took some out of a second. And you can see now, again, I got my, 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 bar, my bar data set, and I have my, my, my fact table, star, my star schema on, on the right side. My fact table in the middle with my dimensions around. So again, this is my data warehouse. These are my raw tables. So at this point, I can actually start my live reporting. So if I have to go back to home, again, we're not going to get into the designer mode, just letting you know that once you construct your data model, um, you're essentially up and ready to go. Okay? So now if I wanted to go back, and say if I wanted to kind of show you an easier way, if you have a, um, a cross a sales spreadsheet with multiple tabs, we're going to add a space real quickly here. I'm just going to demonstrate how quickly and easily we can get up and running. So I'm going to do an automatic data modeling in this case. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to show you what happens if you have multiple tabs. I'm just going to call it multiple tabs in Excel. Hit done. Again, I'm using Excel because so many clients still use Excel for their reporting and dashboard. But I want to see how you can take it to another level by just bringing it into the verse. So I'm going to upload a flat file. I'm going to browse. And here I have Supreme Eats. It has multiple tabs within this existing spreadsheet. Hit open, hit upload. I'm going to go out and retrieve and separate all of my separate tabs. I'm going to go ahead and process now. And I'll show you all. You see it basically I've separated all of my tabs within this Excel spreadsheet, which is pretty, pretty awesome. It continues, now it's going to go out and process all of my different tabs, essentially almost as a different data source. And you see it just takes a matter of seconds. Um, in, this, in this example, it's less than 20 megabytes. Um, so if you're dealing with a larger data set, it would take just a slightly longer, anywhere from a minute to a few minutes, just to process it. But again, once you process it, you have the data, it's cooked. So now I'm taking the, with my details, you can see, just to make sure it, it processed properly, you can see they have no errors here, which is phenomenal. Gives you the time, gives you all of my tables, how I'm using, what you know, descriptions, um, the level of granularity. So if I go back to my defined source and, and go to my data flow, look at here. A nice constructed star schema model. Again, I've got my, my sources on the left, my data sources, and I also have my dimensions as well as my fact table and my star star schema. Okay, all my linking is done for me, and now I'm actually ready to start reporting. So you can see I so we created two different models, um, one from multiple data sources, and then we created another model from an existing spreadsheet that had several tabs, several spreadsheets, 
and now we have a model which we can report off and, and really do some, some really cool dashboarding. So I'm going to go back over to my PowerPoint. And this concludes my, my demo on importing of data and constructing a data model within Burst. To engage with us, just visit our website and select one of our concierge service services today. I thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.